on another aspect of that, given um, uh, the participants in this program are mainly Australians, um, including Australians of Chinese background, um, the Australians of Chinese background can probably raise some money if they went to Tsinghua or Albedo or some, somewhere. Um, but what uh, about the Australians of um, Anglo background? Uh, have you ever seen any of them being able to raise some capital in China? It's very difficult. Um, we haven't seen a lot. Yeah. Um, um, Australian companies without any familial or yeah. sort of yeah. really deeply personal Chinese relationships raise um, real sort of um, yeah. money in, in, in China. Um, you know, a lot of the time, um, you know, as I said, it's very relationship yeah, sort of sure, based. Sure. Um, so for those, for those Australian companies with um, a Chinese connection, it's easier, whether it's through, sure. you know, venture capital ways or through local governments, you know, yeah. what we do see a lot. Yes. People, if they have a local connection to a city, a local city, it's those yeah. local government connections that, you know, there's a lot of local government money yeah. um, that's sure. available. Cool. Okay, um, moving on to um, uh, Module 5 or Week 5, um, one of the other things that I was wanting you to talk a bit about was um, sort of legal structures you've used in China, and we, we will be having some lawyers talk, you know, about the formal things of it, but um, what sort of experiences have you had with differing legal structures? I mean... So there's all sorts <laughs> here, right? So, um, and again, look, I would say, I would venture to say um, the Chinese market is one where um, if you do everything black and by the black letter of the law, um, then it it becomes challenging um, to get anything done. Yeah. So this is not a encouragement to do illegal things, but it is more about looking at where are the grey uh, areas and trying to find advantage um, in those in those grey areas, and that is still the way most of the market works um, mm. in, in China. Unless you're, of course, in um, strictly prohibitive or very sensitive industries. Sure, so sure. if you're bringing a medical marijuana company into China, then I don't think there's a lot of grey. So, <laughs> so you know, yeah. um, but, you know, in most other industries, find out, seek out those grey areas and exploit the, the, those shades of grey in order to get things done. So in terms of the legal structures that you have, you have everything from, you know, your wholly owned foreign enterprises, your wolfies, to at the other extreme, a completely local Chinese company. Mm -hmm. Again, that depends on your network and how you partner. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the deep strategic, sort of initial strategic issues that, mm -hmm. that as a startup in China you, you make. Do you want to have a local Chinese partner? If you do have a local Chinese partner, that brings a whole lot of advantages because you can really localise the setup of your business. Yes. Right? And you can tap into, and this is probably, I might be jumping ahead, this is probably the crux of what I would say around doing business in China, whether you're big or small. Yep. The entrepreneurial talent and the entrepreneurial drive of the Chinese is extraordinary. And as an Aussie company wanting to get that into market, if you can tap into and in a way ride on that entrepreneurial talent and drive, you're on a good thing. Mm -hmm. right? So then the question becomes, how do you find a Chinese partner, whether it's an individual or an organization, yeah. and appropriately incentivize them, like give them enough skin in the game such mm -hmm. that your venture becomes their venture and they do everything that they can to make you and them successful. Yeah. That's that's the way I would I would look at it. So then whilst of course there's trade-offs to that, how do you control your brand? How do you control your risk? How do you control your operations if you if you do localize it and put a lot in the hands of a Chinese partner? Of course there are things that you need to be careful yeah. with there. But again with all of those risks, you know, bearing those risks in mind. The, the other extreme of that is you set up a Wolfie, 100% owned, yeah. you know, a company owned by yourself, and then you have to do that partnering just through partnerships and, 
you know, joint venture type um, type arrangements. It helps if you happen to be married uh, mm, to a to a Chinese person. <laughs> a lot of people do it like that. Yeah. So yeah. A lot of foreigners with Chinese partners yeah. and Chinese spouses, yeah. and that brings a range of um, benefits. Benefits and risks as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>